G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy. Today we are going to go through my AFL fantasy team. Now, a number of weeks ago, I made a video called I want you to roast my AFL fantasy team with the premise of that video, letting you know that I am bad at fantasy. Like I'm just not that good and I needed some help. And you guys really came through. You actually gave some really good insights as to how to improve a fantasy team. So I hope I've used those to improve my team. But what I'm going to do today is reveal the updates that I've made, clarify a few points. There are a few just gut feel decisions in this video and I realize it's probably going to suck again. But I did take on your advice and we're going to go through my team. But before I do that, just be aware we do have a True Footy Fantasy League going. We do this every year and the link and invite code and everything is in the description of this video. By all means, join the True Footy League and see how easily you can defeat me. So generally speaking, a lot of the uh, feedback that I got from my original team was around the fact that I had too many players with early buys. So obviously players playing an opening round, they will then have an early buy at some point during the first five or six weeks of the season, I think it is. So that was the first thing I took on board. I removed guys like Dave. Cole, Sam Walsh. A lot of the players that I did have were also primos. So I do think I have about four players that will have an early buy in this in this particular lineup. Maybe it's three actually, but we'll go through it and you can let me know if you think it's too much or whatever. It was also pointed out I probably spent too much in my back line and too little in my midfield. I have corrected that and now I'm a little bit worried that I've overcorrected it. But again, let's start to go through the team. Cool, let's start with the back line here. So we got Sheasel, Young and Coleman. So two relatively high priced players. I don't know if they qualify as primos, but Sheasel just seems like a safe bet and he's continued that form in the preseason really well. Hayden Young looks to, you know, he's already a high volume player as a defender, but now he's looking at more midfield time. That one's a little bit of a hunch and I think there's still some upside there. It's the same thing with Coleman, a bit more of a mid pricer, obviously, but forecasted to have, a, you know, a year where he's going to get a lot more of the pill. It's the other three that I'm kind of nervous about. So I've got Caulfield. I think he's going to play round one. And obviously this is all subject to change and I wouldn't pay too much attention to the rookies and the bench options. Although we do have a better idea of it now than we did say when I did this team reveal four weeks ago or six weeks ago, whatever it was. I have gone with Zach Williams. I realize he is not absolutely locked in to play an opening round. And by the time this comes out, we might have an answer on that. But nonetheless, as a mid price like option to really improve, I'd say, you know, he's probably one you should definitely have in your team. And hopefully he plays in opening round. I've also gone with Gibkiss. And this one, obviously he's not expected to have a high score, but I feel like he does get a lot of marks and he's now a third year player and he's coming off a year off with injuries. So that one's a bit dicey, but with the bench options there, Blake has as I record this at 200k is already tipped for a debut so I'm happy with that although of course these things could change and then Toby Pink as well I think is pretty locked into play round one for North so even though he's a key position defender probably won't score well but he'll at least appreciate a little bit so I'm hoping that is going to be okay but let me know in the comments if that is too shitty a backline so now let's talk about the midfield. So I have two players in this midfield that will have an early buy in Tom Green and James Jordan. So again, let me know if I should go with someone other than Green. From a fantasy points point of view, I think he's a pretty safe bet, but the opening buy, like I don't know if it's stupid to have him in this team. Bont is a safe bet. Rosie, Laird, these guys are pretty damn reliable. So in terms of the mid prices, I do, you know, the Max Holmes one, I think is a bit more of a hunch. I think we saw him play a little bit more halfback flank and rotating through the midfield. And I think there is upside there at 685K. So that's my logic. I just think he's going to have a bit of a big improvement this year. I think he scored 88 points, a goal, 29 possessions in their second game against Essendon. So if that becomes a bit of a baseline, I think there's genuine value there. Same thing with James Jordan. He had 31 touches in Sydney's second preseason game. And at 454K, you know, I like weighing him up against guys like Jinby and Wardlaw. I'm not 100% convinced we'll see a big jump in improvement in output from Wardlaw and Jinby. Not because I don't think they're good players, completely separating this. Obviously, Wardlaw looks like an absolute gem and I'd say Jinby's behind him in talent, but they're priced at like 550 and 600 odd each. So I think the arguments for not betting on them are fairly strong. And uh, so I went with James Jordan. I think he's more likely to get those high 20 possessions. You can tell by the fact that I'm referencing possessions and not scores that I'm not a genuine fantasy player, but we're having fun. And then I've gone with the two, you know, rookies in McKersha and Sanders. I think those guys are safe bets to play. And I think Sanders is an absolute must have for any fantasy player. He's going to play round one for sure, you'd think. And he had 30 touches in their second preseason game. So that one is like having Will Ashcroft or Harry Shees or Nick Dacos last year, in my opinion. For the bench options, I went with Clark and Windsor. Again, Clark with Guthrie's injury, I'd imagine he plays. 
I think he had 17 touches in their second game, but he's my bench option at 237K. That's pretty good price. And Windsor is uh, definitely going to debut. And I just don't think he's necessarily going to score that many points, but he will play. So maybe a better option will present itself. But Caleb Windsor, you know, he's, he's exciting. So then I played around with my rucks a lot. Um, you know, there was an argument against Tim English for not having too much upside. Somebody made the point in the comments section last time that Lob might ruck more this year, which might impact English's score. So I went with Rowan Marshall. He is a genuine number one ruck and there's no value in his price, but consistent player, you know, wins possession, wins hit outs. So I went with a pretty premium option there. And Brody Grundy, I think, I would imagine most people are going to have in this team because he's returning to number one ruck. The other player that I did like for this was actually Tristan Cherry for the same logic that he's going to be the number one ruck at North Melbourne. But I kind of erred on the side of conservatism and went Brody Grundy. Toby Conway as my bench rookie. Again, 316K. I don't know. Is that too much to have uh, on the bench? But I did prefer that to having pretty much any other ruck in the competition because Toby Conway has at least a chance of playing, I would have thought. I could be wrong. We'll see. And as the round one teams get announced, obviously I might change that. Then we go on to forward line. And again, a few mid-priced options here that I've gone with. So McRae as a mid-forward, I felt pretty comfortable with this on the basis of the logic that with Smith out of the midfield, now, admittedly, Sanders comes in, but surely McRae gets a little bit closer to those ball-winning ways that we were once very accustomed to. He used to be a bit of a fantasy pig, so that one's a bit of a hunch, but I could be talked out of it. Zach Fisher, I think at 600K, presents really good value. I think he had 36 touches in their second preseason game. That one was a little bit too good pass-up for me. Nat Fife is also playing a bit more midfield. I'm not expecting Fife to you know, produce really premium scores this year, because he'll probably handle a lot more than he kicks, from what I can tell, but he should get his hands on the footy more than 490k suggests. So I like that one. Darcy Wilson, again, I think he had 24 touches in the second preseason game. And at 249k, that's a bit of a walk-up start. Harley Reid as well. The job security. I don't think Harley Reid by any stretch will be one of the best scorers for a rookie, but at 300k, I think you should have him in your forward line. And Alex Sexton, I really like this one. I, I think this is a bit of a must-have too. He's going to play a little bit more halfback flank this year, or maybe exclusively in that role from what I can tell. And at 380k, for a guy that got 31 touches in their second preseason game, I think that one's a, a no-brainer. For the bench options, again, these could change. Dersma, I think, will play round one, and Nick Watson is a good chance, but not locked in. So those ones could change. And Harvey Thomas as well, as my utility pick there, 200k and, you know, considered close to their team for round one. So I think that one's decent, but again, the, the rookies will change. As far as other ones go, I think Liam Baker you can get as a forward and there's a chance he betters his break even, which is, I think, 71. I think I read that somewhere. So that's not a bad option, but I was eventually talked out of that. I don't know how volume Baker's going to be. I know he's going to play a bit of midfield this year, but I made changes to this team three or four times before I ended up recording this video so maybe he finds his way back in but let me know in the comments guys what do you think of this team be brutal it's fine I, I genuinely need the help i do think this is better than my previous one and we certainly have more info than we did previously but make sure you join the competition let me know in the comments what you think of the team and i'll see you in the next one cheers